Hello, and welcome to today's video. My name is Lonnie Von Eric Rice III, and today we will discuss the third installment in our situation analysis business model. If you saw my previous videos, you'll know that we discussed the SWOT analysis and the PESTLE analysis. Well, today I will review the Porter's Five Forces model and how it can affect your business. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First published in 1979 in the Harvard Business Review, the article titled How Competitive Forces Shape Strategy by Michael E. Porter revolutionized the field of strategy. Popularly known as Porter's Five Forces, this business model not only influenced the generation of academic research, but also provided a map to rigorously analyze competitive forces. The Porter's Five Forces model borrows heavily its concepts from the traditional field of microeconomics. The five forces that determine the industry structure of an organization are, number one, the threat of new entry. Now, if there is strong threat of new entrants, then current players will earn less profits. Number two is buyer power. If buyers have strong bargaining power, then they usually tend to drive price down, thus limiting the potential of a company to earn sustainable profits. Three is the threat of substitution. If the threat of a substitute is high, the company must either continuously invest into R&D or risks losing out to disruptors in the industry. Four is supplier power. If suppliers have strong bargaining power, then they will extract higher prices from companies. Now these four forces merge together and create the fifth force, which is competitive rivalry. If competition is intense, then it becomes difficult for existing players to earn sustainable profits. Today, we will use the Porter's Five Forces model to analyze the competitiveness faced by my brand, L'Etiquette Noir. This analysis will help in understanding and providing solutions to the level field of competition. And L'Etiquette Noir can cope with that competition. When analyzed closely, Porter's Five Forces will help determine the drivers of profitability for the brand. Now let's take a look at Porter's Five Forces analysis of Leticate Noir luxurious footwear. Again, let's start with number one, the threat of new entry. We've labeled this section as moderate based on the following. You have to look at proprietary products. That means filing trademark, copyright, and patent entries into your product. The capital requirements right now, I'm building the brand through my personal funds. Other companies may have to rely on bank loans, which could affect their entry into this pool. Brand identity development. It's important that you get marketing and sales up to snuff so you make sure that the name of the product can get out to the customers. Government policy. There's overseas manufacturing of our products, so we have to make sure that we abide by all the laws associated with that country. Access to distribution. The shoe district where the shoes are made is a hub and can get the product out to other people, but this may deter some entrants into getting into the field once they understand that they have to use a distribution center to get the product out. And there is a learning curve. Right now I'm going through trial and error, but as the time goes by, I may have to reach out to individuals that are already in the field to learn from them. Number two is the buyer power. And we've rated this low to moderate. You have to look at price sensitivity, the pricing of the shoes. Am I priced competitively or am I overpriced? We also have to look at product differentiation. We will be within the segment of luxurious footwear that is defined by vegan leather. Next is the buyer volume. The more the buyers buy your product, the higher the volume. So you have to take that in consideration as well. Next is buyer concentration. So geographically, what we're looking at is how the product gets out. Well, I do have the strategy of keeping everything 
in-house with a third party and they handle all of the, the buyer concentrations and make sure that the product gets shipped out across the world. Now, there's also buyer information. You know, how aware are the customers when it comes to your products? And next is bargaining leverage. Do the buyers have that leverage? And this is pretty low within this luxurious foot market industry. Next is the threat of substitution. We've also rated this low to moderate. So you have to look at price performance and trade-offs of substitutions. Right now, this is low because we are a grassroots movement and the word hasn't really gotten off and taken off amongst the masses. We do also have to look at the switching costs. And that goes into, once again, the research and development. Uh, we rated this as moderate because we want to make sure that, number one, we get out into the customer's hands to make sure that they can buy the product. So the switching cost when looking at one brand versus another is pretty moderate within this field. Next is the buyer inclination to buy a substitute. When they look at Let's Get Noir brands and then they look at other brands, are they more inclined to stick with the Let's Get Noir brand and purchase it? Next is supplier power. We've rated this segment, segment as high. Now, the importance of volume to the supplier plays a big role on how your product is manufactured. Next, the supplier concentration. There are several suppliers within the shoe district where the shoe is made in Marche, Italy. So we have to take that into account as well. Is there a huge concentration of suppliers? If so, then they compete and we can have that to our advantage to get the lowest cost. Next is the presence of substitutes. And this is moderate. Right now, when you look at the luxurious footwear category, there are some of the heavy hitters in that brand. But Letiquette Noir differentiates itself because it's not as expensive as those brands, but you do have the look of an expensive shoe. And then lastly is the threat of forward integration. Will the brand have distribution? And right now that answer is no. We are relying on a third party source for our distribution. So what does all this mean? When you bring everything together, the competitive rivalry within this luxurious footwear category is moderate. Now where Le Legicate Noir will have to differentiate itself is to make sure that we kind of balance the supplier power since that's the high threshold that may stop us from making ground. Now in order to offset the supplier's high rating, we have to make sure that we keep costs down. And one way to do that is that we don't have any overhead of our products, meaning we don't have a warehouse that we have to take care of financially. The shoes are made overseas by a manufacturer in their warehouse, and they have direct distribution for all of our products. So if that's one way I can keep the cost down and pass that price savings on to my customer, the better it is. So there you have it. This is the Portis Five Forces model dealing with my brand. We have to make sure, once again, that we take all of these forces into account when moving forward with the brand. And seeing that the competitive rivalry right now is moderate, we like our chances in getting in and getting a piece of the pie. Speaking of which, when you look at the expected compound annual growth rate, as published in the business research company, there will be a 7.3% annual growth rate from 2022 to 2030. Now, what this means is that there will be roughly $481 million at stake for the growth of the traditional footwear market moving forward. So if Legicate Noir can get a, just a piece of that $400 million deal, then yes, we'll make sure that we can get a chunk of that business and we have the potential to do well. So with that, I've enjoyed going over the Porter's Five Forces model with the brand. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave the comments below. Thank you for your time.